Hi, <laughs> um, I'm Madeline Kuhn and I'm just doing my new student dialogue for Library 100. And for my new student dialogue, I did um, the course on mental health at Clemson, which I think is really important because mental health is such a, um, it really affects like your everyday life, I would say. So um, I thought it was an interesting new student dialogue to go to. Um, so the first question is, do you feel your group achieved a, two, a true dialogue? And I think that we did because everyone in our group was really talking and, I mean, that's exactly what a dialogue is. It's having a conversation with someone. And our instructors, they kind of um, would ask us questions and a lot of people responded to them and it was really, I think it was a really good dialogue because we actually had conversations and kind of gave our opinions on things and what we knew about a certain subject and then someone else would feed off of it so that's what a dialogue is so um then it says were there active voices in your dialogue and I think there were active voices because an active voice is someone that promotes their feelings and also just says what they know about a subject and there were a few people that really did that um there's one girl that talked about how her brother was diagnosed with bipolar disorder after he came home from um, the war in Afghanistan, and she said that it was a really um, difficult experience, and she kind of said like her feelings about it and what she thought like helped her through the whole thing with her family, and that was really interesting. Um, and then, but there are also some reserved voices in our dialogue because. I mean, some people didn't really know what to say exactly, but um, that kind of happens with anything, I guess. If you're having a dialogue with someone, you don't really know like exactly what they're talking about, or if you don't have a first-hand ex experience about it, then I guess that could be something that um, you don't really know what to talk about. But for myself, I think that I played a pretty good role in our group. Um, personally, I don't have a... Um, first-hand like serious mental health issue with myself or with my family or friends so I didn't really have a story to share but I certainly did like listen to what everyone was saying and kind of said my opinions on it and what I thought um, a certain thing was <clears throat> and um, just kind of like because I wanted to learn more about it and um, I an interesting thing that one of our instructors brought up was that, well, what we had to do was we were given a mental health disorder and then we had to draw it on the board, like what a person with that disorder looked like. And with our group, we had schizophrenia, so we like drew what a schizophrenic person looked like. And um, afterwards, we went, we went through all of them and then our instructor told us that we drew the wrong person because a person with schizophrenia can look complete, <coughs> completely like a normal person. And I think one of the most important things I learned from the dialogue was that um, anybody can have a mental health issue at Clemson. And, and you're going to meet so many different people when you're at Clemson. And from so many different backgrounds, so many different um, areas of the country, so many different lifestyles and everything. So you're going to come across people that have a mental health issue. But that does not mean that they they evoke it when you're when if you see them on the side of the street it's not like they're going to be like you're going to be like oh that person's depressed because any normal co person can be depressed and I thought that was really interesting because we kind of have this stereotypic thing about us that about I mean anyone really if you think of someone that's depressed you're going to think of something that's like maybe crying or whatever but I mean obviously like if you're depressed I mean you could still be depressed and like still be okay so I don't know, it was just interesting. And then especially with the schizophrenia thing, you kind of think of someone that's schizophrenic that's, I don't know, has, um, is kind of like freaking out or whatever. But um, I guess like they're, at times they're always going to be fine. They're always going to be normal and you're not going to be able to tell if they're schizophrenic. So that's just, um, I thought that was really interesting. And that was one of the major things that I learned from the dialogue. And then it says, why do you think dialogue is a component of Library 100? And I think it's a component of Library 100 because um, dialogue happens in everyday life and it's a really important part of our life because we, I think people almost learn the most when having a dialogue because if you think about having a lecture in class, the teacher or professor is just lecturing at you. They're just talking at you. You're not talking back. You're not stating your opinion. You're not asking questions. I mean, you could ask questions, but um, but then if you think about like a, 
maybe like a smaller group or an SI session or like a tutoring session, you're kind of having a dialogue with the person. You're asking them questions, you're talking about what's going on, and then you kind of, I feel like you just learn more from that. And also it's just in every, like in, with a different life topic, like something that I didn't even know about my friend could bring up one day and then we could talk about it and I can learn more about it and just kind of like state your opinion and state like what you think about everything and I think dialogue is one of the most like learning experiences and that's what Library 100 I think is about because um, it's about just doing the fundamental things that you have to do when you are a new student at Clemson. I mean college is one of the biggest transitions we'll ever do in our life and I think it's important to have something that is kind of a foundation before we go into all of our really difficult classes next semester and next in the next few, few years like having library 100 even though it was kind of difficult having to well not difficult but kind of annoying having to read a book over the summer then write an essay about it and then write up like watch Meta Tiger and then do the library tutorials but at the same time when you think about it if you really are listening to all these things, writing all of these things, like watching everything that you have to do, then you really are going to learn um, like the fundamentals of what you need to know about Clemson and like just kind of starting off your college life right. So overall, I thought Library 100 was <coughs> a good experience. Um, I wouldn't do it again, but I mean, I think it's definitely appropriate and you need to do it. Um, but overall, I really thought new, the new student dialogue was really interesting and I'm glad I learned more things about mental health because it is a very important thing that affects your life daily and um, I think it's really important for people to have a knowledge of it and to know that you don't always want to judge a book by its cover because you don't know what someone's going through or if they go to therapy outside of school or if they have home issues or anything so I think it's really important to just like get to know people and then um, not judge them right when you look at them because that's a very I think um, people judge a lot of people before they should and I think you'll make more friends and have a better life if you don't if you just like get to know people and then be friends with them and it'll be great so but I think that's all so um, yeah all right.